On your mark. Get ready. It's time to go the distance for sports news and sports review. Get ready. It's the pitch. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pitch Sports Show. I'm your host, John Fox, alongside here with Mike Pepsperoni and Mitch Sabatelli. Now, what we are, simple. We're a sports show. We, we do our best to analyze and break down everything in the sports world. Primarily, we'll be covering the, the top, you know, the four main sports, baseball, football, basketball, and hockey. But anything that is relevant in the sports world, we will be sure, we will be sure to talk about. Now, the first topic of the day is daily news. Now, the Patriots re-sign Dante Hightower, finally. It seemed like it took forever. Four years, uh, four years, 43 and a half million dollars. Now, thoughts on this? We'll go to you first, Mitch. Well, the Patriots do what they do, and, uh, you know, they got Dante Hightower late in the first round, a couple, a couple years back. Hightower was pivotal for the last two of the last three championships um, for, for the NFL. Obviously... He's made himself, he's converted himself from an outside linebacker to a mainstream middle linebacker and really kind of harnessed the role as leader in that defensive club right now. And you see, I, I think the thing with, with Hightower, it's not even his skill, it's the fact that there was a major, major hole in, at the linebacker position. And to get him for just slightly over $11 million a year, um, I think it's a great deal. You know, they let him test the free agency waters, and I think, believe the Jets gave him $14 million annually, but ultimately he wanted to come back home. I think it was a good, good deal for both sides. I will say I don't think the Jets' cupcakes present was good enough for Dante Hightower. And also the uh, Steelers pretty much telling them if you don't accept this offer now then, and you know, don't have an offer before you leave town, then uh, don't bother coming back. It's definitely so, a good way to, you yeah, know, yeah, to approach absolutely. players. You know, if you I mean, the good thing is um, he was very pivotal, especially pivotal in the last Super Bowl game, especially with uh, pretty much, I believe, to be the huge turning point and the main reason why they won the Super Bowl was a defensive stop, even if, they, even if the offense did great like they did afterwards. I mean, it was that huge strip sack that caused it all to turn around in their favor. Um, he got the money he deserved, which is actually really nice because the Patriots are usually not known for paying players at a high rate like that. So to know that they're very serious about taking this double dynasty to the next level with next year, with hopefully winning the Super Bowl, that uh, I think that signing him and giving him 19 million guaranteed is exactly what they need to order up. So I think it was a great deal for him, especially, and a great deal for the Patriots. They've locked up uh, another defensive, important defensive component to make a uh, Super Bowl run. So I think it was a great, great deal for both sides. And real, real quick, too, I think the thing is with Hightower, too, and like you, Peps just mentioned, they don't really pay, you know, the defensive, especially the defensive side of the ball, too much outside of maybe Adelius Thomas. I know they gave Vince Will Fork a little bit of extension. Yeah. But you see cornerbacks come and go, Ty oh, Law, yeah. Asante, yeah. uh, Darrell Rivas. But I think... Dante Hightower, they kind of want to be that Teddy Bruschi type mainstay in the middle of the uh, defense there. Middle linebacker is such a pivotal position with the yeah. run-stopping game, uh, passing game, and mainly leadership because it's kind of the quarterback of that defensive front. So I think that was yeah, he's, great deal. He's a force. He's a force to be reckoned with. For He'll be there for a while. So yeah, glad to have him. Okay, moving on from daily news to the rest of you know uh, the NFL's significant signings. We will stay with the Patriots, though. So the Patriots locked down cornerback Stephon Gilmore. It was a five-year, uh, $65 million yep, 65 contract. Million. Five, a five-year, $65 million contract. Perhaps we'll start with your thoughts on this. Signing. I think it's great for uh, the Patriots. They're usually not known, like I've said already, for uh, especially going out and grabbing uh, up their players that are worth a lot and uh, are looking for a big contract like that. But uh, it shows me that they're really serious about going after another one. And uh, they realize Brady's window is closing, and this defense is just going to get better. So when they locked up Gilmore, it kind of made me think, they're going to lock up Hightower. They're serious. They're going to go after it. But um, I think it's great for, for both sides. Again, 
Um, hopefully it, you know, plus especially with him playing on Buffalo, he knows Buffalo. He'll be playing them twice a year. He'll be playing in the, you know, AFC East. He'll be playing six games, and he'll already have an idea of all the teams he's dealing with. So I yeah. feel like him adapting to New England will just will just happen naturally for him. So I think it's great, and hopefully he can play alongside Malcolm Butler. That would be nice, because I think that would round it out. So I think it's a great signing. $40 million guaranteed for him. Uh, another nice lockdown contract for the Patriots. Yeah. yeah, I think Gilmore, uh, $14 million a year is very uh, – it's not something Bill Belichick would do. And so obviously he's seen Gilmore, you know, twice every year for the last uh, two or three years here. And Gilmore has exponentially improved each of those last three years. And I think the big thing that they see with Gilmore is his physicality right towards the line of scrimmage. So within the first five yards, and it's similar to what Rebus did and even Butler. And we're going to talk about Butler a little bit later. Uh, but Stephen Gilmore, you know, I know what they, I know they've seen what he's done the last three years. So they're hoping that with a better coaching staff in New England, they can fully, you know, see that potential with Gilmore Absolutely. and maybe live up to that 14 million and make him a top five cornerback. And I feel like cornerback, as far as defensively goes, is probably one of the most uh, important positions, Definitely. especially with it becoming a more passing game. You want to really shut out the opposing team's best option. And yep. whether they have Butler or not, I think this cr- creates some leverage for the Patriots. And if, if Butler ultimately does move, um, which, again, we will talk about, it does give you that shutdown corner. And now you finally see McCourty, Gilmore, uh, Hightower, and now this line really coming to shape. So I think that defense is really kind of finding the, its core here. I love the deal. $40 million guaranteed, though. That's something Belichick doesn't do. And it's definitely the biggest signing since it's Elias Thomas, in my opinion. But I, I love there. the move. The window of opportunity is there, and he's going he's to go take it now or it's going to be too late. Yep. Yeah, definitely. All right, more Patriots signings, actually trades. Uh, Brandon Cooks of the Saints traded to the Patriots along with Coney Ealy while we're talking about trades. We'll start off with Brandon Cooks first. Uh, would you like to take this one? Thoughts on I, the- I, I think it's great. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, 23, it's, 23 years old. Talk about, talk about back never, back. talk about no days off. Talk about never being content. I mean, it's Belichick. I mean, two huge moves in the same day. And one of them being was that Cook's trade. I mean, I think it's great for New England. I mean, it's great for Cooks because he can actually come to a place where he feels like he can maybe go get a championship. And he's just, he's, he's not your typical wideout either because he's very effective. He's very adaptable. He's a great route runner, and he's got some ridiculous speed. Yeah. And I mean, I yeah. think that's just going to be such a compliment on a deep threat, you know, compared to you got Edelman and Hogan crossing. And then you got him going deep, like it's just two. And then you got Gronk back healthy. I mean, and then you know, it's it's just that offense is just is like you said, just ridiculous. I mean, I think having him is just probably the biggest signing I think so far. I I believe, and it's uh, it's just shows the Patriots are never content, and uh, it just shows why they're the best. Further thoughts on Brandon Cook? Yeah, I definitely think this is. Uh, Patriots going all in, and I think it's the you've seen this back when it was back in 07, and when they went and got Randy Moss, Wes Welker, Adelius Thomas, the list goes on and on. Kyle Brady. I, the one thing that I love about Brandon Cooks is that he is that outside threat. Now you pair him alongside with Chris Hogan on the outside, who emerges one of the better um, outside threats in the game. Now Brady, I, the one thing that nobody is really talking about is the fact that this is going to uh, open the field up for Edelman and hopefully prevent Gronk from being injured. Um, so if yeah. you have those outside threats, you know, Hogan and Cooks, not only is it going to give Brady another look and hopefully get some more extra yards downfield, but it's also going to open up some more room and maybe there'll be less double teams on Edelman and, and Gronkowski. And Edelman's getting up there in age now, so you don't want to have him get all those hits. I know yeah. what Wells Walker has had in his, late in his career with all the concussions. But I think uh, a lot of people don't notice, too, you talk about the Patriots, and yeah, it was a great, great comeback to win that Super Bowl. And they rolled over Pittsburgh. But what about the first half of the Patriots? And what about the Houston game? Um, Houston really shut down that that close, you know, 10 to 15 yard game there. Yeah, and then Atlanta, Atlanta did that as well until they finally started opening up the field a little bit and uh, put the ball back in Brady's hands. So I think now that they're getting a little bit more of an outside game and with the game of evolving a little bit and the fact that he is only 23 years old, uh, I, I think it's a perfect Perfect move for Cooks. Oh yeah. Um, and and again, you know, if you if you see all of our options here with Cooks, 
Gronkowski, Edelman, Hogan, Amendola. This guy's you, Mitchell. You, yeah, like, if, if you, you if you yeah. have a, a five yeah. wide out set right now with those five, you have Dwayne Allen and Malcolm Mitchell still on the bench. So that just goes to show you how good the step yeah, is. Yeah, Lewis and White in the backfield too. Yeah, and you can't you can't play this guy. And now we've we've also well since we're you know talking about the Patriots signings, we'll yeah. talk about Rex Burkhead. Yeah. Also, I mean you don't also, really yeah. know a lot about the uh, was last year's. First season? Or yeah. second no, season I believe it was second. Uh, it was definitely his best season. It might have been either Towards second or third. Towards the end, especially. Oh, yeah. he, he, exploded. Yeah. he exploded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Cincinnati. And you know, kind of reminds you of like a, a, part, like a, a little like bit a, of a Peyton Hillis type there, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but I think yeah. they paid him like a starter, so I don't know. We're going to translate a little bit into LeGarrette Blunt here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Rex Burkhead, you know, he definitely emerged onto the scene. Definitely looks like a Belichick type player. Um, you know, Blunt has been that guy for. For ages now, you had Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, another big Patriot guy. They like guys who don't fumble. Rex Burkhead doesn't fumble. Um, that's why they hated Stephen Ridley because yeah, he'd make a great play and then he'd fumble the ball. Yeah. Um, Legarrette Blunt did have some fumble uh, issues in the playoffs this in the year Super Bowl too. in the Super Bowl yeah. too, and that's why they started putting the ball more into Brady's hands, and that's how we got, you know, that big comeback. So I think they definitely want to ball security is the main thing with Bill Belichick. Um, definitely goal line play. So if we do lose Blunt, yeah, White emerged onto the scene, and Deion Lewis is now healthy. So I think Rex Burkhead, if we do lose Blunt, is fine. But uh, Burkhead, a lot of people don't know this, is really, really good on special teams too. Yeah, so I think it yeah. u- ultimately means the end for Brandon Bolden. Yeah, we need, we need that for special teams. So too. I like it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we'll stay with you. Uh, further talks of the uh, the Coney Ely trade to the Patriots. Yeah. Thoughts on this? Yeah, I love what Belichick's doing here, and everyone's always criticizing him about how he never makes, you know, always stockpiles these picks, stockpiles these picks, and never really makes these picks. Now, he's basically doing the draft a month in advance here because his first-round pick was Brandon Cooks, and his second-round pick was Coney Ely. So people always talk about how, oh, well, now Belichick's not going to have any players to draft. These were his draft picks. Basically, he took Cooks in the first round. He took Ely in the second round. Ely's a great pass rusher. They just lost uh, Chris Long as well as Jabal Sheard, who, with the Patriots coaching staff, were able to take the most out of. And I see Coney Ely. You saw him on the emergence of the scene. I know he sacked Peyton Manning three times in that Super Bowl two years ago and picked him off. Had the Carolina Panthers won that game, everyone would have known who Coney Ely was because he was going to win the Super Bowl MVP that year. So I know Belichick saw that. I know Coney Ely. I know has been on social media recently praising what the Patriots have done. I don't know if that, I know Belichick's never seen, does, does social media, but maybe he's heard something about that, about how he likes the organization, respects the organization. And for a second round pick, for a guy that could put up 10 to 12 sacks Absolutely. in the Patriots organization, I think it's a great, great move. I think it's a perfect compliment to, uh, oh, they just added Gilmore, and then you, yeah. uh, you re-upped Hightower. I mean, Alan Branch as well. Branch too. I mean, they're they're stacking the box. They're coming after the quarterback. I mean, they're they're gonna get aggressive, and that defense is gonna be even better than it was last year, I think. Us, you know, I mean, they locked up uh, Harmon too for four years for twenty million. Yeah. So that'll be, so that's good. I mean, I think that uh, it's only gonna help. He was on the fifteen to one Carolina Panthers team, and they were that good for a reason. Him being a huge part of it, also. So I mean, any addition of that, you know, magnitude is. Awesome to have. Yeah, definitely. Oh. All right, well, we'll talk about the, I think the, uh, pre- pretty much the, the most concerning topic is the deal with Mal- uh, Malcolm Butler. Yeah. Now, he's an unrestricted free agent, and he's very unhappy with the Patriots right now in their uh, non-attempt to pay him. Right, yeah. So uh, let, let's talk about this. We'll, we'll give this one to you. Uh, first, Mitch. Uh, yeah, and the thing is with a restricted free agent, you can ma- you can sign him to a tender, and the Patriots always go by the book and try to you know stay with with the system or whatever. So they're going to give him the first round tender. Now the thing that makes this interesting is the Saints want Mal- uh, Malcolm Butler, but they just traded um, they just traded Cook. Cooks and got our thirty second pick. So they cannot trade that thirty second round pick back until he does sign a deal and officially becomes. Um, a saint, so that make it a sign and trade. Yeah. Now the Patriots, because they sign that tender, if they do get a trade, get the Saints' eleventh pick back, which is huge. So therefore, Cooks would have been traded for an eleventh pick. Would it, they would get Cooks and the eleventh pick for Malcolm Butler and a third? So that would be a great, great move in like two moves in one. Um, with with Stephen Gilmore, it does give you some leverage, and the, the fact that you do have a shutdown corner in case. 
Butler leaves. But I really want Butler to stay for a couple yeah, of reasons because too. he kind of symbol symbolizes the whole Patriot way. You know, some guy they find off the scrap heap on the on the road, they bring him in for a couple tryouts. He impressed everyone, and eventually, you know, the whole Butler go play when they gave Butler the chance, and uh, the rest was history with the big um, catch. And after that catch, you know, that's when he really emerged onto the scene as a top, top yeah. cornerback. Two-time Super Bowl champion now. Yeah, and that's what I think they're trying to do with Gilmore and try to use that coaching staff to make him even better. Um, so maybe the thing with Butler is they've already maxed out that potential, and they know that he's probably not worth that $14 million. But I, I don't know. The one big thing so I am hearing. What is the actual hearing, deal that he's at, that he's looking for? He that wants his agent is he, looking for. Well, the thing is, he's not upset with the Patriots. The Patriots aren't upset with Butler. It's the agent that the Patriots dislike. The agent is. Uh, yeah, Belichick wants that. Belichick, Belichick does not, not like Malcolm that. Butler's uh, agent. So Butler has said he wants to remain a Patriot. He wants to remain a Patriot, but the agent wants to get paid too, and he sees that Gilmore deal. And says, okay, to he's a 14 million. Yeah, well, not just a slap in the face, but I want that 14 million too. So I think ultimately, I don't think Butler's going to be here long term. I think we would have seen something by now. And now with the Dante <coughs> Hightower signing, I think that ultimately, sadly, ends the Malcolm Butler days here. I completely agree. I mean, the fact that they added Gilmore just kind of spoke for itself in my mind is that they are not going to plan on having him stick around, especially with all these issues going on. I mean, the thing is, like, it's kind of bad for both sides because the, if the if he has to agree to a contract and bring it back to the Patriots, and then they have to necessarily have it be like a sign and trade kind of right. thing. Otherwise, they will lose that pick. So it's not a good situation really for anybody right now. But I mean, essentially, if Butler wants to get paid, it's probably it's it's not going to be in New England. So I mean. I have a bad feeling that he's going to be out. But, I mean, hey, you know, that's that's part of the business, and, you know, you move on. All right. Let's talk about where do you think LeGarrette Blunt will end up? Do you think he will re-sign, ultimately end up re-signing with the Patriots, or do you think he will go somewhere else? The, the rumors I heard was that he did, he did want to remain a Patriot and the Patriots wanted to keep him. But I think Rex Burkhead, and the whole thing with the Patriots coaching staff is they really find the best potential with guys – that aren't making that much money, and I think that I yeah. think he's basically taking over for Blunt here. They've let him go before in the past. You know, he had a great playoff run, and then they let him yeah. go to the Steelers. He had that drug problem, and then he got cut, yeah. and then they brought him back, and he even got better. Um, now, yeah, Blunt got 18 touchdowns last year, but a lot of those were at the goal line, and those yeah. could have been put into Brady's hands. Not to take anything away from Garrett Blunt, but yeah. it's not like he is busting out, you know, 30, 40 yard runs for 18, it, for yeah, 18 touchdowns. There's definitely a team out there for him, and I think that perfect team is a team like the Detroit Lions because yeah. they're so pass happy. They don't, they have Amir Abdullah, who's a fast running back, but he's coming back from being hurt. And I think adding someone like Blunt's only going to help because you know what they need? They need a clock mover. Yeah. They don't have a clock mover. They spend so much time having to like eight to ten games, I think almost every game in the first half of the season at least, if not in the later half of the season, they were behind in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just don't see how him coming back to New England is going to fit, especially with you saying sign a Burkhead. I, I think he's going to go to a team like Detroit or maybe even the New York Giants. But like, I think I think the Lions That's a great move, thing. too, because – with Stafford, when Stafford lost Megatron last year, you know he became more of the Brady type, you know, scanning the box, looking for the best option. So I mean, if he if he he's doesn't see that, he needs so a better. Times he a needs game. a guy who can hold the he, ball yeah, and doesn't he needs, drop he the needs, ball. He needs versatility like in the running move. back. Number court. one team that you wouldn't want to see Blunt go to that Jets. that would that would make them dangerous. Well, that not would make, make them, them not make them dangerous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the teams that need a running back that are. You know, I'd say I'd say the Giants. Giants, would, yeah. They don't have I a mean, power back. They lost. They, they lost Rashard Jennings, right? The, the Giants yeah. have had nobody. They they lost the Perkins. Perkins. Yeah, and I think Blunt would be perfect for them because obviously I think Eli is the leader as far as you know. They want to pass the ball. They want to pass the ball. Pass, and, Blunt, and now you get he's on a decline. You get Brandon Marshall, yeah. to compliment it, Odell Beckham. So, and Sterling Shepard, yeah. too. Sterling the Shepard Giants also well. see that Eli's window's closing, I think, too. Yeah. And that's the and, thing. And uh, so. Blunt knows how to take that back seat and knows how to be the you know, second fiddle. He doesn't yeah. need to demand the oh, ball. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's great in the goal line. So yeah. I, I would love hey, either, I think, either of those yeah. moves. And I don't think, I, as, as a Patriot fan, I would never I – don't, I, I don't mind Blunt going to the Giants. As an NFL fan, I think that would be a good yeah, move. Yeah, I mean, Blunt, I, he doesn't really pose a threat in my mind as much. Nope. Okay, moving on, but staying with the Patriots, the last Patriots topic – Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, okay, we'll give this one to you, Peps. Where do you think 
Jimmy Garoppolo will end up ultimately. Do you, I don't think he's going to go anywhere. I, I believe, really don't I, think I there's. Any, so I, well, I don't think there's any good deal really out there. I think the Patriots are just going to hold on to him, and I, I really think that that's the best option. Especially say something, go, you know, have, you know, God forbid that something happens to Brady in the first yeah. half of the year. You have a capable backup quarterback who can be a starter in this league. He's proven it. I know it's only been you know what, two and a half games, but he had great numbers, and I mean. With Belichick behind him, I think he could mold anyone into a great quarterback, and I think I Garoppolo think is is the next thing, is the next coming after Brady, and I think that they should keep him because I don't think anything that even a team like the Browns can offer is really worthy of what the Patriots want. I don't think they're going to get what they want from him, and so I think the value of keeping him is a little bit more. But if they go one more year and they get and they don't get rid of him, or they don't have something happen with that, then I think that's that's a huge mistake if they don't do something after this season. That comes well, up. yeah, because basically they'd be paying like like forty five million dollars for two quarterbacks, yeah. one to just sit. I just uh, don't think getting rid of them is a good move right now. Your yeah, thoughts. and I think this is why everyone really hates the Patriots. You know, we're so good that our biggest problem is that we have too many good quarterbacks and what to do with them. I think. The fact that we have Garoppolo speaks volumes about what Pepsi has said about the coaching staff. And, yeah, if, I, if I'm in Garoppolo's shoes, it's easy to say as a Patriots fan, oh, yeah, keep Garoppolo, keep Garoppolo in case Brady gets hurt. But Garoppolo wants to get out there. He wants to get paid. He's won already two rings in, in three years here, yeah. uh, basically. Uh, not, not that he's done much for the team except for the first couple of games there. But, you know, he, he's established himself as an, a viable backup and wants to prove himself as a, as a starter. So I think he ultimately, in the back of his head, wants to be a Patriot but knows that Tom Brady is going to be here for a couple more years. I think what the Patriots need to do is really discuss with Tom Brady, listen, do you have two to three more years left? Now, I think Garoppolo would be willing to wait maybe two to three years to re- eventually take the torch away from Brady. Anything over that, he wants to get out of here and he wants to be a starter. He's still getting so, paid, though. Yeah. But, a lot of money. But I'd be willing to, you know, franchise him that money. If I know that he's going to be our quarterback after Brady's yeah. gone, I'd pay him, and, and we have this cap space for that. But the one team that I, I will, that everyone thinks that Garoppolo's going to is the Cleveland Browns. They are stacked with picks. They've actually traded to get another pick and took on Brock Osweiler to do so. Sentence. I believe they have, like, three second-rounders and three first-rounders in the next two years. Um, so I don't think they're going to be able to get yeah. the number one pick from him, but – Adam Schefter, as great as he is, I heard him say that if a team out there would offer the Patriots four first-round picks, if we want to take that. I think that would yeah. be awesome. And I, I would take the, I would take Jimmy Garoppolo for a first. And I second. agree. Okay, it seems uh, we're, we're winding down on time here, and I don't think we we might get to we talk got about uh, yeah, but uh, you know, other. I mean, it's very big news in NFL, and uh, I mean, we'll go we'll go right to the next. Top signing, I believe. Martellus Bennett yeah. signs with the Green Bay Packers. Pep's thoughts on this? Um, I think I think good for Martellus Bennett. I just and the Packers because they need a tight end. They'd Cook, but I, I don't think Cook's near the physical specimen that Bennett is. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's not. he. You know, I, I think it's good for Aaron Rodgers. You go from Brady to Rodgers. I mean, who could ask for a better transition? I mean. Huh. It's two of the best quarterbacks to play in the NFL. Give so. Rodgers more weapons. He just lost Eddie Lacy. Uh, they moved Ty Montgomery to running back. They're going to get, you know, they, they know that he's won in the Super Bowl. He can win. Uh, he has that experience. Give him another option in the middle. Now pair him with Devontae, Devontae Adams and Jordy Nelson. Yeah. I like that move, and I do like it for Martellus Bennett. Pulling a Revis, gets his money, uh, gets his championships, and move on. Yeah. Okay, I, I, think that, I think that pretty much sums up, you know, free agent signings this far, I mean, because pretty much it's all been the Patriots. <laughs> yeah. It's Eddie Lacy moving It's just a few. Eddie, it's just uh, a few. Uh, Brandon Marshall's a big one. Yeah, but yeah Brandon Marshall, Eddie Lacy. Uh, what was the contract with Seattle? Um, I, one it was year. a one-year 5.5, and there's also a thing in the clause that if he keeps the weight off, he gets an extra 350K. There you go. Okay. Nice. All right, moving on. Uh, possible destinations for, you know, still top free agents. Adrian Peterson, who would like to take this one first? Where I do think, you think I, he will go? I think he's going to go to, uh, I truly believe he could go to a team, like I've said before, the Lions. I mean, they got Abdullah, yeah. but I mean, yeah, you know, if he could work under someone like Adrian Peterson for a year or two, he could be even better. And that would help Matthew Stafford so much and also being able to stay in the NFC North. I mean, another thing is I think he could also go to Minnesota, back to Minnesota, because yeah. they don't really have a running back. But um, it would be, I think, between those two teams in the NFC North and then also possibly he could go to Seattle, the Packers, or even Detroit. But um, 
I, I see him either going back to Minnesota or going to like a team like Detroit or something like that. Um, I'm going to go on a limb and say he signs with Oakland. They just lost Latavius Murray. Uh, oh, yeah. Derek, Derek Carr established himself as an MVP candidate. Point. They have the passing game. If you take AP and put that in – into that team, a winning organization right now from last year, and take some pressure off of Derek Carr coming off an of injury, I think that would be a match made in heaven. I would love to see Adrian Peterson in Oakland. All right, quick. Somebody take it. Tony Romo. I'll take it real Where will he end up ultimately? He's either going to end up in Houston or uh, Denver. Either one, uh, I hate to say the fact that Tony Romo makes you a contender. I think whoever gets yeah. Tony Romo becomes I don't think, I don't the think second best team in the I don't AFC. Think that Denver will take that gamble. Yeah, they won't. I, I think he's going to end up in, in Houston. I, I think his best scenario to win now, I feel like the perfect fit for him would be the Kansas City Chiefs. They have Alex Smith. Yeah, but. I think he could be better than Alex Smith. I don't know if that's going to I don't think Alex Smith's getting it done. That's why they haven't gotten to the next level. I yeah, think it's because it's of Too him. much of a game manager. But that's a big change going from a game manager to a I mean, Kansas City or Denver. That's the thing I with think. Tony Romo is that team was built to have a gunslinger with Brock Osweiler. So I think it would transition perfectly. And he's already yeah. lives in Dallas. His family's it's from Dallas. That's not too much of a move from Dallas yeah, to Houston. Might, I love that yeah, move. Yeah, they're going to be stuck in the same position they were last year, though. With All right. Very quick. And we're going to uh, end the show with uh, some quick NBA. Uh, NBA thoughts in the East. Who can contend with Cleveland right now? I, I don't think that. I, I mean, to be honest, I love to say the Celtics. Obviously, I love the Celtics and I love Boston. I mean, it's just I don't think they can do it. I don't think Toronto can do it either. I think I think there's only the only other team I think that has a chance with the potential to do it. I think the Washington Wizards yeah, have a chance to compete, but I really don't see anybody. Beating Cleveland, I think Cleveland's got the easiest cakewalk of any of the teams in the NBA. I just don't compared to last year. They're gonna, you know, it's an easier cakewalk this year. I don't see how they don't make it. Real quick, uh, Toronto was looking really good when they got PJ Tucker and Serge Ibaka at the deadline, but Kyle Lowry going hurt, yeah, getting hurt with the injury yeah. really took them back seat. Um, as much as I love to see Boston get there, the second best team in the East right now is Washington Wizards with John Wall, Bradley Beal, Otto Porter emerging, and then having. Uh, but- Marcin Gortat. Very yeah, quickly, who do you, would you agree with him? I agree with them absolutely. Washington, I think Wizards. Washington. I also think when it comes to the, uh, I mean, this is my this is my surprise kind of thing with the uh, with the West is I, I really believe that the San Antonio Spurs are the best all around team in the West, and I think that they're going to be able to outscore Golden State. I think this is their year. I don't, I'm tired of this Cleveland Golden State back and forth. I think it's about a team about a team like that to step up and give the real balance of power and take over the league. I think it's going to be Golden State versus Cleveland rematch again. But. All right, very quickly, just just shout out names. MVP race winner. It's Russell Westbrook, but I think it should be Absolutely. Kawhi Leonard. I think it should be Russell Westbrook and should be Russell, Russell Westbrook in general Probably. because he's averaging 32 points a game, 10 and a half. Ten and a half rebounds and ten assists. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 numbers Kawhi, that go back to legends player in the, game, in the NBA and couldn't even do that. And averaging close to 25, 30 points. Russell best Westbrook. defensive point. It's yeah. close. All right, so that pretty much concludes our first episode uh, of the Pitch Sports Show. Uh, it's just want to throw a shout out before we end. Thank you, Saugus Cable TV, for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, and we're going to be a bi-weekly so, uh, show, so every two weeks we're going to be getting you a show. Uh, this, this one was primarily uh, NFL signings, uh, everything NFL, because it's just everything is, you know. Big baseball show next time. A lot yeah, going on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, until next time, have a good one, guys.